So occasionally the powers that be will take something completely mundane and add a little bit of spice to it to make it more exciting. And a long time ago, somebody took a camera, pointed it at themselves from themselves talking and uploaded it to the internet. 20 years later, and now we have influencer boxing. Before we get into it, my name is Mr. Third Person, the internet substitute. I make freeform video essays where I talk about whatever I feel like talking about at the moment and ramble like my substitutes used to do. So if you like this video, like and subscribe if you want to see more and enjoy. Somebody on my last video commented very aggressively saying like, these aren't freeform video essays. Don't claim something if you're not willing to do the research. This is a vlog. Log. And I'm like, dude, I don't care. Call it what you want to call it. I'm just talking to a camera. In theory, this is just a, a school presentation gone wrong where you have a kid standing there about to pee his pants shaking like, I don't know anything about the Queen of England. And real quick, the last video was my first video on YouTube to actually do like really well. So I'm going to give that some attention at the end of the video. I'll talk about it. Thank you, everybody who watched it and left positive and also negative comments. I am appreciative of all comments. So thank you. Influencer boxing is what I categorize as brain dead entertainment. And brain dead entertainment is literally anything that is entertaining where you need to turn your brain off to enjoy it. Like if you don't don't think about it this is fun like the fast and furious franchise or madam web or dude the boom and doom guys boom or doom the rizzler aj and big justice dude and i hate that i know their names but that's brain dead entertainment there's nothing to it once you think about it you're like huh why am i watching this it's like monkeys clapping like ha, 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 you know that's what influencer boxing is influencer boxing started in 2018 with ksi versus logan paul and it made sense that the two content creators that made content for people who didn't reach the mental capacity of 14 are boxing now well i'm not trying to slam boxing with this video boxing is a highly intense very strategic very athletic sport and even content creation isn't all those things but content creation also isn't necessarily easy it's definitely way easier than most jobs on, i would say it's easier than 90 percent of the jobs on the planet but at the same time you're actually doing something you're creating something you are committing and dedicating yourself to make sure that other people feel some sort of joy or interest while watching you but you mix those two things together and you get like your brain just explodes because what the what are, what are we doing right here ksi went against logan paul and I immediately knew that this was a purely just a cash grab. I called this early. I was like, neither one of them was going to win. I told this to my little brother who was a fan. I think my little brother was a fan of both of them at the time. 2018, he was he was actually 14 years old. Wow, I hit that age very correctly. At the time, he was like, who do you think is going to win? I was like, nobody's going to win. Not even the viewers. The viewers aren't even winning because you're paying. I don't even know if it was paid for paid. Pay to view, pay per view, pay per view. I used to think that pay per view, it was pay per view, meaning you had to give money. So I had the initial dot correct, but just the meaning of it was wrong. That's besides the point. Nobody's winning in KSI versus Logan Paul because both these people are doing it for their reputations and they have to uphold their reputation. So if one wins over the other, that kind of just screws the reputation. We saw that with Kendrick versus Drake recently. And then it ended up being a draw. It is a majority draw. It's a draw. Six. There was no winner in that fight, and I don't know how much they made. Both KSI and Paul earned a minimum of $900,000 for the bout as stipulated in their contract. $900,000 they made for beating on each other and not even having a winner. And now, influencer boxing has developed. There's two strands. The one strand, influencer boxing, is the equivalent to the internet what Dancing with the Stars is to actual celebrities. Dancing with the Stars is for celebrities who are down on their luck, whose nobody cares about anymore. The most they'll get is like an article in People Magazine or something. And now they're on Dancing with the Stars to prove, I guess, that they're still alive. You know, these are these are like celebrities and actors and stuff where people in conversation are like, huh, I wonder if this person's still living. And then you check in Google and you're like, oh, they're on Dancing with the Stars. That makes sense. Influencer boxing are influencers who nobody like cares about really actively. They're all for the most part brain dead content creators. <laughs> And I barely recognize any of them, but the ones I do, like Salt Poppy, for example. Salt Poppy's actually insane. I just checked out his page. He did his salt thing, right, with the hands, and he did nothing else. Well, no, he did. He did that run. And I don't even think he created the run. I think he just mastered it. He just got really good at it. Those two things was all he did. And now he only makes boxing content and occasionally sprinkles in his running and the salt stuff. He completely transitioned into like an athletic page. He was actually strategically smart when it came to his career because he capitalized off of his popularity and started doing brain dead content. The influencer boxers are all different levels of irrelevant mixed in with some OnlyFans models, I guess. And the other side, which I don't know, I started this off by saying there's two sides to influencer boxing completely forgot about the other side. There's the side of the relevant content creators and the side of brain dead content creators fighting against actual professional boxers. Why? Who in their right mind thought this was a good idea? And that's how you know that it's rigged from the start because even though Logan Paul is extremely athletic, so is KSI. I don't know about his brother Deji because I think Deji also fought against Floyd Mayweather. Even though they're extremely athletic, there is no way in hell that their training is anywhere near matching the training of a Floyd Mayweather or a Mike Tyson because this weekend, Jake Paul and Mike Tyson are fighting each other. <laughs> 
Dude, if you had gone back 15 years and said, this kid who's dabbing at the Olympics is gonna fight a beast of a man who bit off a guy's ear and had a pet tiger, I would have been like, bro, what drugs are you taking right now? You need to stay off the internet and go to like the rainforest or something. Jake Paul and Mike Tyson are fighting and if you look at the, the pre-fight videos it's just mike tyson going back into beast mode you can barely recognize him anymore and jake paul in a fat suit because that's all he has he's a brain dead content creator 14 year olds and mike tyson i love mike tyson he's a legend he has made insane character development over years now because like but back then like i said he was a beast he was an animal he would just anger and brutality and fighting and now he's transformed into somebody very wise somebody with a lot of wisdom who wants to share it with people and he wants them to do good in their lives and be better and not fall into i guess the sinkhole that he had fallen into when he was younger jake paul and his brother got famous off of dabbing at the olympics and filming a dead guy They're, they don't have any other what's the word that i'm looking for bro it's like the professional term for pulp there's no and i want to say consistency but that's not the word either i don't like these people can i just flat out say that i don't like logan paul or jake paul i don't like either one of them and i think it's okay to say that because i think a lot of people don't like the both of them they are kind of the scourge of the internet in my opinion there was a time when logan paul and jake paul first started out i'll see them occasionally logan paul more than jake i'll see them occasionally be like okay i guess another typical rich white kid that's you know doing what he wants to do because he's a rich white kid they would make their content and occasionally i'll see something that was kind of funny there's one video of logan paul playing pool and he shoots it and he goes the like he makes these noises and i thought that was funny but other than that it was kind of just like vine shit posting oh, then the stuff happened with the forest can you say side on uh, youtube i might beep that out but stuff happened in japan and then he faked being colorblind let me tell you about the color of blue. Oh, what about the color? What is, oh, red, I think it is. How about yellow? You guys like yellow? And at some point, I'm like, dude, I'm tired of seeing this guy. And then Jake Paul at the same time is the annoying little brother. Jake Paul is to Logan Paul, like the little kid, little brother that's next to him with just a little bit of spit coming down the side of his mouth. And that, that's, that's how I see the two of them. And then you put them up against, originally they fought against Floyd Mayweather in 2020 or 2021, which also didn't have a winner because that would just ruin Floyd Mayweather's reputation. If he won, it would have just been like, yeah, look, see, finally, Floyd Mayweather would beat up that little white kid. But if Floyd Mayweather, Floyd, I can't speak right. But if Floyd, why can't I say that name? But if Floyd Mayweather, but if Floyd Mayweather, but if Floyd Mayweather, but if Floyd Mayweather had lost that fight, which he wasn't going to, his reputation would have been ruined, which is what I'm going to get at when it comes to the Mike Tyson versus Jake Paul fight. There is literally no positive side in this for Mike Tyson. There is nothing that he gains from this. He may remain in his reputation, but the only other possibility is that he goes down because if he wins the fight, Mike Tyson just remains Mike Tyson. If Mike Tyson loses the fight, those, how long, how old is he? I want to say 50 years, but I don't want to insult the guy. His 40 years of legacy, and legend is then questioned and is besmirched because he wanted to make some money. This is all this is, is a cash grab. They all just want to make money, which is why they signed up for this. And you may be thinking, well, that kid, that's not the case. They already have money. Guess what the one thing is that people who have money want the most? More money. They already have everything else. The only thing you can get unlimited of is money. So they keep getting it to feel some sort of achievement and progress. Because if you have the money, you can just buy shit all the time. Then there's no achievement and progress in that, especially for Mike Tyson and Jake Paul, who've had money for an extended period of time, they've been buying stuff and getting stuff and doing stuff they wanted for the longest time. So there's nothing else. Everything else is a possibility. Everything is easily achievable. Look at how much they made. I already told you KSI and Logan Paul made $900,000 in the first fight. How much money? I just read this number. Something that Floyd Mayweather probably couldn't do. I'm rethinking my life choices. Should I have been born a rich white kid? Should I have been illiterate? Maybe then I would have made $20 million off of fighting somebody. Doing the math, the older Paul brother earned an estimated $10 million from the exhibition. $10 million this dude made for a fight with no winner. That's insane. And Floyd Mayweather ended up fighting against KSI's brother later on. No one cares. I didn't even know that happened. And now Mike Tyson. Let's look up how much Mike Tyson and Logan Paul are going to make off this fight. Okay, yeah, no. Also around $20 million bucks. Way too much money. For something like that. That's insane. And I don't even know what point I was getting at, bro. It shopped in Faden fell on. Mike Tyson has nothing to gain and everything to lose. At the end of this, his reputation will have either been smothered or stagnant. 
And then Jake Paul, Jake Paul only has to gain from this. The Paul brothers, they thrive off of humiliation. They thrive off of fucking up. And we've noticed this in the past because they fucked up a lot. So if Jake Paul loses this, he's going to find some way to profit off of the loss. And besides how much money he's making off the fight in the first place. I'm going to make a prediction, right? I'll do predictions for the three different areas. I'm going Dr. Strange with the head thing right now. If Mike Tyson loses, Jake Paul's going to capitalize off of that. He won. Yeah, ha, woo, woo, woo. And Mike, Ty Mike Tyson's reputation is going to be kind of a little, uh. if it's a draw, then it's just a draw. It's just like the last fight. It draws and then nobody cares a week later. But if Mike Tyson wins and Jake Paul loses a couple weeks after that, or maybe even immediately after that, somebody will make a lot of fun of Jake Paul. And then Jake Paul will go, well, let's see you do this. Let's see you fight me. And then they're going to have another fight in a year. They're setting it up for later. And influencer boxing is insanity because now every influencer who is kind of a wannabe and they know that they make only make brain dead, brain dead content is they want to box everybody. They call other people for boxing. Blueface was part of the boxing. I think long neck was part of the boxing now we have some little kid calling out the rizzler i call you out to a box match rizzler uh, the rizzler is eight and this other random little wannabe gangster white kid is calling him out for a boxing match if we end up having two eight-year-olds box each other i'm deleting the internet and i don't that mean i don't mean that for me i'm going to sit here for the next five years i'm going to study coding and i'm going to figure out a way to hack the internet the concept and delete it and it won't exist anymore because then we've reached we're in the end game now the Rizzler. What do you think about influencer boxing? Is it a doom or a boom? Influencer boxing? Doom! Now I gotta find a clip of him saying that. Ah, shit. What do you think? Are you into influencer boxing? Do you think it's a good idea? Do you think it actually makes sense in terms of what influencers do? Or do you agree with me where it's kind of nonsensical and unnecessary and is only used to profit these people that are already profiting or are kind of losing their profits and they're using this as like a boost in their profits? Let me know down below. If you like this video, leave it a like, comment what you liked about it, comment maybe what you didn't like about it. You know, if you want to see more in the future, subscribe and I'll see you next time. The Rizzler, AJ and Big Justice, the Doom and Boom guys, they are, they're probably one of the last people i know there may be a lot of them and i'm just on the wrong side of the internet but the aj big justice and uh the rizzler they're making content that is purely meant to just bring joy out in people it is one of the last areas of the internet where they're not using rage bait to gain attention they're just doing what they're doing and it's it's like i said it's brain dead content but it's bringing joy to people's lives. It's doing something positive, which I agree with. Well, yeah, no, dude, that The Rock the Rock video, bro, like I uploaded that randomly because his Christmas movie came out and I was like, huh, I guess this might be a good time to upload. And it was funny because I was actually planning on doing a, a complete content switch. Like I was going to completely change how I do my content because I had already uploaded three videos of that format. And I was like, eh, it's not really working. They barely got like 100 views. This isn't working. Nobody wants to see this. And that's the wrong mentality because the internet is a zero sum game. You have to just keep throwing shit into it until at some point something pops out. So that was probably a mistake on my end. But yeah, I uploaded that video. And then I just went on to live my life because that's how I do it. I upload shit and then I just keep living. I keep doing my thing. I play video games. I go to work, whatever. Right. And then six days later, five, six days later, I'm sitting at my computer as I do most nights and I'm about to go to bed. It's two o'clock in the morning and I get a message from one of my friends saying, hey, man, your rock video is blowing up. And I'm like, huh? What are you talking about? And I had for a second forgot I had uploaded a rock video. So I was like, wait, let me check. Now, I was expecting to see like maybe like a thousand views, two thousand views. Bro, I go on the video and there's twenty five thousand views and I'm up three hundred subscribers insane i i freaked out my live i live with my brother now i call i was like yeah she i yelled for him and i went i was like bro come. and he was in the bathroom i was like bro what are you doing he's like i'm on the toilet i was like are you gonna be done soon he's like i'll be out in a second i said be out in half a second and then we ran back here and we were looking at it bro there were 200 some comments that i had missed and the reason i missed this all i didn't get any notifications i got three new subscriber notifications in the last week and i was like oh i guess a couple people saw the video and liked it but no it was over 300 a bunch of views now it's at 30,000 views which is insane and this is super cool because like on TikTok I had I, I had been pretty big on TikTok in the past I was doing really well on TikTok for a while but then the algorithm screwed me and now I'm trying to attempt to make my way into YouTube and I feel way I feel much much prouder and more success in gaining 300 subscribers on YouTube than I do gaining 30,000 on TikTok like this feels really good because it feels like the work I put into it is worth it. And not because, oh, it's doing well, it's having sex, but because people are enjoying it. That's my main thing. My main drive, the main thing that drives me to do this is the joy in others. People reading comments of somebody saying that they read, that they watched this while eating. Ah, oh, my heart melted.
or just to see people saying like, oh, man, you deserve more. Not because like, yeah, sure. But because, oh, you believe that you believe in me. You think I can do this. Those comments fill me up with the joy and make me happy. The joy of others has always been my main source of joy. So if you enjoyed those that video, if you enjoyed watching that, if you enjoyed video, if you enjoy any of this, then I thank you, first of all. And second, I'm glad you're here. I'm glad you're gonna, I hope you're gonna stick around. If you're not, and this is something that's up with me too. If you at some point go, oh, maybe I don't like this video as much as I think, you can unsubscribe. Go watch something else, fine. Because my, like I said, I need you to find what brings you the most joy. And if I'm not that, then that's okay. I don't want to hinder you from your from your joy, right? So thank you to everybody who's here, who stuck around. Thank you for everybody who watched this video, the last video. Dude, 13% of people finished the first video, which is an insane number. That's so cool. Uh, but yeah, no, thank you. Thank you very much. And um, uh, I'll upload this now the next couple days. And uh, until next time, peace out.